This tutorial video will teach you how to use Prime by Loop Community either from an iPad or a computer and uh, be able to trigger pads or backing tracks or click tracks, whatever you need for your worship team and also to be able to trigger them with a MIDI controller uh, with your feet, especially if you are a guitar player, a keyboard player where you have to keep your hands on the instrument. It's nice to have that flexibility with a foot controller. So uh, let's jump into how I set things up. So first, um, you need to go to, if you don't have any backing tracks and you're looking for some backing tracks, you need to get some things set up into your software. And so uh, you do that by going to loopcommunity.com and you can purchase uh, backing tracks, uh, stems, a lot of people will call them that, uh, for particular songs that you want to use. So right now I have four of them set up in my iPad. And uh, what you see there is simple pads in A. And these are actually pads that I purchased through uh, worshiptutorials.com and they're just really nice exactly what they say they're simple pads where they don't get in the way but you can definitely play over the top of them and then I have two purchase tracks I have great things which uh, Phil Wickham did and then living hope which <laughs> Phil Wickham did as well and I have them in the original key there but I'm actually going to change the the key to help these songs flow together a little bit better. So I'm actually just wanting to go from the key of A to the key of D. So the simple pads I typically use for um, just starting sort of a background drone that either guitar or piano could still play over the top of, but as I'm welcoming the congregation in, uh, maybe reading some scripture, that type of thing, setting up our, our musical time of worship. So, so that, uh, we'll get to hear that in just a moment. So I have that up front. And then great things, I actually want to do that in the same key, in the key of A. So the original is in B, so I'm going to click down here to get it into the key of A. And then Living Hope, uh, the original is in E flat, but I'm actually going to want to drop that down so you have nice smooth transitions from the key of A to the key of D. And uh, so we want to do a few things up front. We want to also, where it says flow over here, you see the little uh, triangles. We want to change those to be a crossfade. It's kind of a crossfade on demand. It looks like an X. So I'm going to do that with all of them except for the last one. So from there, uh, let's set up our MIDI controller. So. I'm just using the, the three button Looptimus pedal and um, I'll show you what I do for those. So what you do, is you click up here for MIDI, you want to assign the MIDI controller. So for the very first, the simple pads right there, I just want that to be number one. So I can look down, step on number one and the simple pads start going and we're ready for the service. The next thing I want to do is this bottom right one down here. This is basically the next button. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on number three. And then typically I'll um, click the fade out button for number two. Now, if everything goes right through the service, typically I'm not clicking number two. Number two is more if if we get way off the click track or for some reason we kind of need to bail from whatever's going on with the backing track, I, I click the fade out button and that gets rid of the backing tracks without it being abrupt for the congregation to hear. But typically all I'm clicking is number one and then multiple times I'll be clicking number three to go from next to next to next to next and it just automatically crossfades on demand as you click the number three button. So. Um, once we're done assigning that, we're going to go back to MIDI. Well, I'll click the MIDI button to get out of MIDI mode, basically. And then um, let's, give it a, let's give it a try. Let's listen to what it sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on number one. So you can hear those, those pads kind of floating in the background. And again, we're in the key of A right now. 
So anything I play in the key of A over the top of that should fit just fine. So whether guitar, piano, whatever their instrument you'd want to use there. Okay, this, and this, um, this is great for intros, this is great for transitions in between songs, um, wherever you want to put these, it just kind of helps glue everything together. So now when we're ready to start the first song, I'll go ahead and hit the number three button because that's, uh, that'll trigger to the, the first backing track. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You hear the click. Intro two, three, four. Okay, so you see how that works. So we don't typically want to have all of those backing tracks happening. Hopefully you have, hopefully you have a team that you're playing with and you're just trying to fill in some supplemental instruments. So let's go down and look at the, the different instruments that are there. Uh, so we've got acoustic guitar. I'm playing acoustic guitar, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, we have a bass player, so I'm going to get rid of the bass ones. Um, maybe we'll leave the clap in there, but the drums we'll get rid of. The electric guitar is playing a specific line, so I'm going to figure out which one does the lead line. Intro two, three, four. So you can see that one's doing the lead lead line. So I'm actually going to mute that one because our lead electric guitar player will do that. Um, we have a keyboard player. I mean, you can listen to all these individually. What is the loop doing? It's not doing anything right there. What is the loop doing here? Okay. Maybe we'll leave that. Maybe we won't. I don't know. We'll leave it there for now. Um, actually, and then piano. And then there's some synth-based stuff. We'll leave that there for, for the, the sake of this tutorial. But um, now, when your band shows up, you're not playing parts that are stepping on their toes. These are just um, supplemental tracks, you know, to kind of help keep everybody together. And also, as you heard, there's a, there's a guy talking in your ear telling you chorus two, three, four, verse two, three, four, and walks you into these different uh, sections of the song. So there's no question for anybody where we're heading. And that's not always super important if you're just playing a song without backing tracks. I mean, you can usually figure that out as a team. But if ever somebody took a wrong turn while these backing tracks are going on, uh, that could be a recipe for a train wreck, <laughs> a musical train wreck. So. Um, so those are really helpful little cues so we all know where we're going at the right time. So let's say um, at the end of the song, we're just going to transition straight into the next one. So I'm going to go towards the end so we can kind of hear what that sounds like. And then it should automatically transition into the next song. Okay, so you get the idea there where it just automatically crossfades right into the next song. And again, you'd want to go into this song and mute whatever instruments that you have represented by your team. So you're not playing the same parts with the backing tracks and who's on the team. But the supplemental tracks are really nice. At the end of whatever your closing song is, you could put um, some pads again at the end. So 
that closes the song out and then it's going to slowly just transition into those floaty pads again. So this one has a really long outro. That's probably okay. But like if there was a really long outro and you kind of wanted to shorten it up, you can actually go back into the song and let's see. So right now you can see it shows 533 is the end of the song, but we'd want it to transition maybe about 524. So if we click on that and it says start time and end time, we're actually going to shorten up the end time. And so let's try that again. As we fade out of that song, it'll move on to the pads a little bit sooner. So it's already crossfading into the pads, and now we're in the key of D. So anything instrumentation wise that you want to play in the key of D over the top of that fits just fine. Okay. Um, and then usually I'll either hit manually the fade out button or the number two button when we're done. So it's just a nice transition out. So I'll go over briefly just the, the hardware you need for, for a setup like this. I'm of course running from, from my iPad, which is super simple. And um, so looking down here, you can see plugged in is this, this Apple adapter. So this is lightning, lightning in, and then um, you've got the lightning power supply plus the you know, USB plug in right here. And I'll, I'll leave a link in the description so you kind of know what the right piece of hardware is there. So you need that. You need the cable that's going to go down to the Looptimus pedal. The Looptimus pedal, you can actually run several different MIDI pedals with this, but I just figured I might as well get the one that, that works with the software that I use. And so uh, loopcommunity.com, you can find these little mini Looptimus pedals. And so you just need a cable going from there to there. Actually, they send you a cable, so you'll be fine there. And then um, I'm just running on the, over here the, um, just a headphone out. But then I run into a, um, a Radial Pro AV2 DI box that takes that um, 3.5 millimeter cable and splits it into two channels that are going to the board. So you've got um, the click channel all go into one channel and then um, all the backing tracks and everything else on the other side. Of course, you don't want the, the click coming out into the congregation. And so that's just running into people's in-ear monitors. Now, uh, that's kind of an important piece too. If your church does not have some way to do in-ear monitors, none of this is going to work. Like if you have floor wedge monitors, um, obviously you can't follow the click track while everybody else in the room is hearing the click track. You want that to be kind of more of a, <laughs> a secret thing between, you know, with you and the team having the click track and the, and the, uh, and the vocal cues in your in-ears. So, so that's very important. So you just run those back to the board and then whoever's running sound will mix in your backing tracks with the, the sound of the singers and the other musicians on the team. So, so that's basically how, how I run these and I've been doing I started with Ableton years ago and that worked fine too, but it's much more complicated than this setup. So I've been using this setup for probably four or five years now. And uh, honestly, it works great. And there's always new uh, backing tracks being put on Loop Community all the time. And honestly, they've gotten much better over time too, as far as just quality. So uh, I'd highly recommend those guys, highly recommend uh, a similar system like this if you're looking for ways to incorporate backing tracks and pads and to trigger anything else uh, musical with your team. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you to kind of get set up and, and running. I'd love to hear if you have comments or questions or 
Um, if you've implemented this and it's, and it's working great in your church, I'd love to hear about that too. Just drop a comment below. But uh, hopefully there'll be more videos to come. So uh, we'll see you soon.